soon our cell phones will have better health data on us than our doctors have in their charts. But doctors, they have clinical standards that frame and give them advice for what to do about particular sorts of readings. So as one doctor told us, I know how to manage three blood pressure readings taken in my clinic. I don't know how to manage 10,000 readings taken at a person's home. Doctors really value data that has some kind of clinical importance that can help them make clinical decisions. Patients, on the other hand, may think of data as telling their story or helping them connect to family and loved ones. Researchers, especially researchers thinking about big data in the healthcare space, really think about data as something that helps uh, explain variants across people. So it's not about one person in particular in a clinical setting, it's about many people. So, so, so these different kinds of expectations mean people act and, and, and do things with data, make decisions about data that uh, really don't fit with all the other folks they need to be connecting with around that data. So what's coming is this wonderful richness of data about our everyday life and our health behavior that may or may not be connected to medical expertise, and it may or may not be connected to uh, a sense of, of actions within the clinic or the laboratory. So that's really where we're um, saying that more work needs to be done in thinking through and about the ways in which people can have conversations around the data or help the data flow across those barriers. My doctor may not even want the data from my mobile phone that tells me about my health, but I can use that data to start a conversation with my doctor, and that may be one of the most important ways that we create social interoperability around these kinds of data.